Great. So uh, I've been uh, holding a series of these meetings um, as uh, stepping stones to more fully understand uh, the code uh, that we're dealing with, with the algebraic rewriting uh, algebra, the ABM framework. Um, We've been working through this uh, predator of prey example, which has sheep, wolves, and grass, and building up some understanding of that. And in various of these sessions, I've sought to uh, better understand certain components uh, of that, that code base and that conceptual framework that underlies it. Uh, and this meeting, I'm hoping will be uh, continuing on there, reflecting the fact that this is a uh, a journey together of learning. Um, I'm, I'm certainly still in the process of uh, more, more completely appreciating um, uh, the, the conceptual framework, the mathematics underlying it, and uh, the higher and the code that that's written on top of it. And what I'm seeing is is really quite uh, intriguing. Uh, what I'm seeing is very encouraging um, as judged by a number of desiderata, um, a number of criteria. I'm seeing elements of modularity, of extensibility. Uh, so modularity in terms of a separation of concerns and, and and encapsulating certain rules. Extensibility by layering on monadic effects atop this. Uh, this ability to sort of uh, express uh, the underlying rules of a program, having these monads that can operate on top of that. I've seen declarative characterization of rules, both um, sort of update rules for agents, as well as kind of the logic of stringing together different aspects of the behavior of agents and declarative characterization of of the relationship of different sort of bits of data and um, structure related to an agent relative to one another. Seeing some elements of kind of reuse, um, reuse of, of higher level structures by lower level. And I'm, I'm hoping to because we're having different subsets of people on different meetings, and because this is a complex sort of set of interlinked and to some degree layered factors, um, each time I'm gonna try to review a little bit of what I've taken away from recent sessions and then try to push onwards, try to expand the scope of our understanding a little bit. And that's what I was hoping to do today. So, um, uh, I don't have any um, great, uh, great sort of uh, uh, prepared notes or slides here, but instead we'll we'll continue to work through uh, some of the code and some of the uh, paper um, uh, behind the code and and uh, some of the example code and perhaps even some of the uh, the code base. Um, so. We're going to go and uh, go back to the webpage, the blog, which really uh, kicked off uh, a lot of it. It's it's this blog here. I'm going to put it into our our chat, and just as a reminder, um, we have an ontology of sorts characterized uh, by a schema and 
this schema characterizes. The uh, data and the some of the relationships between pieces of data for sheep, wolf, and grass. Um, and it's based on an extension to the graph schema. So the graph schema gives us E and I per, per you know, our classic um, uh, graph uh, schema. So we have an object for E, an object for V, excuse me, E and V, and source uh, and target are both morphisms from E to V. We're reusing that schema. We're layering in wolves and sheep. Um, uh, and uh, sheep have locations, which is defined as a morphism from sheep to vertices. And uh, wolves have locations, uh, similarly with uh, morphisms there. And then we have these attribute types, right? Um, and these attribute types let us store uh, pieces of data within the tables. Um, I think... Uh, all of you are familiar with this, but we have two attributes in this case. Uh, we have energy and we have directions, right? Um, and in a particular instance of this, we can declare data types for those, such as the energy is an int and the uh, directions are encoded as symbols. And once again, we have uh, mappings from uh you know, sheeps, uh, for each sheep, there's an energy. For each wolf, there's an energy. Um, uh, sheep is, uh, have, have certain directions. Wolves have certain directions on this underlying graph uh, imposed by the schema graph. And, uh, and then there's a, uh, each edge is associated with a given direction as well. So we'll have edges labeled by, uh, you know, north, south, east, west, or or what have you. And grass, uh, beyond sheep and wolves having energy, grass has a countdown value, which counts the number of steps until that grass is fully regrown, regrown. And so, you know, there's this nice presentation of this category here, um, and then we can extend it with coordinates. Um, and there's a set of kind of basic logic, uh, which... Um, uh, I would have hoped could be declared more declaratively, but but is at least defined in a in a pure function here, where uh, if we have a direction, we can turn right from it. So if we're facing north, we turn east. If we're facing uh, if we're facing east, we turn south, et cetera. We turn left and and right. And in past sessions, we noted that there's this. Um, well, okay, so uh, uh, before I get into this, I should just note that we are taking this schema and we are then going to be uh, initializing a, uh, uh, a, a a C sets on that schema. Uh, and we're going to have, and I should should really be up here, we're going to have, um, uh, for example, in the initial state of the thing, a grid, and we're going to be populating the the network in the grid, and whether we're going to be initializing the sheep and wolves, et cetera, uh, that also uh, live in that in that grid. Okay. Now, um, when we do this, uh, I should note that um, we're we're doing so with a within uh, Atchet, uh, an AC set. So a mapping from this schema or from its extension with coordinates to set, right? And I, this is, I know for all those watching right now uh, within our group, this is likely to be familiar. So, uh, you know, each, there's a set of sheep, there's a set of wolves, there's a function from the set of sheep to the set of vertices that specifies the vertex associated with each sheep. There's a function from the set of sheep to the energy of that sheep, right? Um, uh, there's a function from 
uh, each from the set of wolves to the directions for that wolf or the set of edges um, uh, to the directions uh, for that edge. Okay. Um, and to the direction for that edge. Okay. Um, or to the set of possible direction. This is one particular direction. And uh, I think everyone is uh, familiar with it, but um, in case you're uh, not at all, um, I'll just note that, uh, you know, the instantiation of it looks something like this, right? So, so we have this, um, this is like the schema LV, not the LV prime, not with the coordinates. And we have a database behind it mapping. So we have this map to set, right, to fin set. And so for each edge, we have a set of these primary keys, which denote the, the values in that set. And then we have source and target, which um, are given by these, these uh, the values given by the primary key for each value of, for each element of the set E. We have an, uh, we have a, uh, this foreign key, which points over to, in this case, the V table, because uh, we have a mapping for source from E to V, right? Um, so it points over to here to a particular element of the uh, of V. Um, so it's a foreign key. It's a key to this table. And when we have um, attribute types, we just have the values here. We have no foreign key. It's just the value is in that, you know, in that column, right? Um, uh, it's the value itself. It's not a foreign key into another table. Um, and uh, this, and then here we have sheep and, and wolves, right? And they have energies which are, uh, which are just given by values in the table. And they have directions given by values in the table. Um, uh, for uh, for this uh, sheep, uh, and uh, then we have uh, positions which point to to vertices here. Um, so some of these are foreign keys, but the ones associated with with attributes are not. Okay, I I, I think this is all uh, going to be quite familiar to you. Um, but because we have these AC sets, really we're dealing with these databases and. Um, we're we're in the sphere where you know we could talk in database terms, and one thing that we saw I think two times ago, maybe three, is that um, because we're dealing with these databases, we can actually fruitfully make use of data migration, and an important thing here is that. Um, we can go back and forth to think of the system as as a database and um, thinking about the mapping to set as a database, this mapping as a database. And when we do that, it gives the ability to use these data migration tools. Um, so, for example, this tool um, or this this um, migration uh, mechanism from LV to LV prime. Uh, which basically maps um, anything at LV just maps to its analog and LV prime. So the sheep and the wolves, um, you know, all the attributes, everything carries carries over. But the things that are LV prime turn into variables. And, and this is quite interesting. But the idea here is that when we are are going to have patterns that match things in an AC set, we can have variables that get matched to things, much as in a regular expression. When we match a regular expression with a pattern, we can have variables that capture elements of the regular expression. Here we can have uh, you know, these things that capture when they're engaged in pattern matching components of what they're matching. And um, so when we're migrating something from a uh, an LV C set, you know, an LV set 
to an LV prime set, um, we we can simply take the things which are um, need to be coordinates and we can turn them into these variables that will be instantiated when we're um, using rewrite rules. So when we go to match that rule, we'll be able to have it instantiated with a particular value. So this is one way we use data migration functors. And, we'll, and, and maybe to sort of help, you know, circle back and make sure we have an understanding, I want to emphasize that throughout this, there's going to be these use of rewrite rules. And we talked a lot about those our last few times. And so again, I'm going to go light here, but I want to make sure that no matter who was present in past sessions, we're all at least roughly on the same page with respect to much of this. So uh, we've been dealing with these rewrite rules and rewrite rules figure centrally in the logic here. And they're, they're a declarative way of capturing, specifying how the system updates over time. Um, and the basic deal is we have a state of the world, uh, G, and we have a rewrite rule that matches a certain pattern in G. And we'll see there are these application conditions, positive and negative, that tell that can sort of countermand or say when under what conditions this is matched. But we could think of it right now as kind of matching a pattern. And when that pattern is matched, rewriting it to another pattern, keeping constant, keeping invariant uh, the elements here. And there's a monomorphism because these are things that are in both L, L and R. Things that are in L that are not in I are deleted. Things that are in R and not in I are added. But very importantly, those pat those variables that we added whoa, um, through um, that get added when using this data migration functor. So when we apply this functor here, um, uh, here, for example, uh, to S, or when we apply it um, to uh, to give everything coordinates from something, you know, a whole a whole schedule uh, that was encoded with the LV schema, because these are morphisms, if I'm not mistaken, in the in the LV schema. We can migrate that whole thing to the LV prime schema by piping it through this data migration functor, and that gives patterns to be matched um, when we say go to rewrite and when we go to match it in an actual AC set because the things that the underlying state of the world is going to be based on an LV prime that actually has coordinates it 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 has coordinates in it it's a it's an instance of the thing with 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 coordinates, our rules don't have to be worry worry about coordinates, but when it comes time to the underlying state, it has coordinates, and we can give all of our kind of rewrite rules, all of our rules for you know um, circulating the kind of control flow, the updating things, make them over into the LV prime world, to the world where we have coordinates by just using this data migration functor. Um, and so the data migration functor serves to um, uh, to put things in the coordinate um, uh, sphere. And uh, here, when we go to match against this LV prime thing, a rule that we originally had written with respect to LV, but by fact, we applied uh, F2 to it it now has patterns to match or as variables to match the coordinates here and it takes them up and puts them over here and so we kind of we get a transport of coordinates for free um we wrote this rule in a nice separation of concerns way with respect to lv and we apply it to something that's in lv prime 
and everything just kind of floats along with it. It just floats over to operate on the coordinates, passing them through, recognizing they don't change, which is kind of cool. Now, the logic here, the, the key thing, a key thing that, again, I've emphasized recently, bring everyone aboard here, is that these are all AC sets. They're AC sets. They're maps from a schema to set. All the patterns are. The state of the world is an AC set. It's a map from LV prime schema to, to the state of the world, right? And so um, there's going to be a certain number of sheep, a certain number of walls. And one thing we talked about last time and went into, you know, in quite some detail was the fact that to specify these, we have this very elegant way, declarative way of specifying these rules um, in a more graceful fashion than a year ago. We now have this, this newer mechanism with the AC set colim. So when we used to have to specify that, we would do something like this, um, where we'd sort of brutally specify the AC set to be used here. We say there's one sheep. There's a sheep that has a direction um, an energy and a countdown um, and, and, you know, one vertex, one direction. And I guess, I guess direction one energy, uh, two, two energies. Yeah. One for the sheep, one for the grass, I guess. Um, one direction associated with E. Anyway, it was, it was kind of brutal. And, we went through this other example, which I, I really thought uh, did a, a great job breaking it out. And maybe I don't have it handy. It's this um, this other really nice example for uh, with the baseball team. I guess I closed it, which basically illustrated the difference between the uh, older way and the newer way. I think I... Yeah, here I, I have it here. I have the code here. So, um, you know, if we had a uh, a category, we 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 can specify it in the older way directly as a C sets these rules. Um, so here we have a left rule, and we have to specify this whole AC set. So again, why are we doing this? We're doing it because uh, uh, this is. We're specifying this, and we're going to specify this. Specifying the rule. And this is an AC set. That's how we specify the rule. In category theory, commonly, we want to set up, um, we want to use a pattern to match in something. And we so we do it by, if this is a C set, this will be a C set. And it's just a particularly simple C set, which, which points there. Just like um, if we... Right. If we have a, um, yeah, a category, um, a, uh, a, then if we want to find things in that category, um, uh, we can do so with a functor from another category that describes the diagram we want to find in this target category. Um, so maybe we find want to find an arrow in the target category. So we set up a category that's the walking arrow category. And it's a separate functor into the target category for each instance of an arrow in that target category. So, so if we want to find a category, if find a pattern in a category, we use a category. If we want to find a pattern in AC set, we use an AC set. And so this is an AC set. It's a mapping from the same schema to set. And this is our mapping from the same schema to set. That's the old way of doing this. Or for our case of the predator-prey model, um, it would look like, okay, now I'm, um, it would look like, uh, not this one, um, it would look like this. This is the old way of doing it. We're declaring it a C set. And then we're going to use that to match sheeps, you know, match instances of sheep. 
But last time we looked at a much slicker way to do this using this AC set colim. And that provided declarative ways of sort of saying, hey, give me an AC set, kind of the natural AC set um, that, that uh, characterizes uh, what I want. So here we could do things like say, okay, we want, I'll, I'll do the uh, sheep eat grass, right? Um, uh, here, we could say we want an AC set where we have a sheep and we want uh, the sheep to be in a location where the grass is ready to eat, right? Or we say we have a sheep and a wolf and where the Wolf's location is the same as the sheep. This is one of the reasons I'm saying it's declarative. We're, we're going to be specifying this rule in a declarative way. The first thing is we specify a pattern to be matched, and we replace it by another pattern, keeping some things invariant. But more than that, we have these ways of specifying each of these that have this declarative feel. You know, find me a wolf and sheep, which are in the same location. Find me a sheep which is in a location with grass ready to eat, right? Um, uh, and uh, find me a sheep whose energy is zero, um, uh, meaning they're at the brink of starvation. Um, so this AC set colim, I'm not going to get into the, the theory of it, but basically it leverages this construct of a, of a colimit and it's dual um you know op the limit including a push out um excuse me a push out in the code limit and a pullback in the limit just to, to do to have this sort of logic to this minimal logic just one sheep and I want the minimal thing that will kind of uh be able to have this characteristic the best the minimal one the one through which all other ones factor and we don't have to go through this kind of brutal, this kind of brutal specification of all these pieces of the AC set. Instead, the equivalent of this for specifying this L is is a thing of beauty. Um, we just say we have two players, we have two teams, and uh, the first player is on the first team, the second player is on the second team, and the first team is the away team, and the second team, oh, sorry, the first team is the home team, the second team is the away team. That was there in this, um, I mean, all that information is here, you know, is member of, is in this function, right? Uh, player, um, team has name, it's, it's kind of uh, in this, um, two players, two teams, two names. Um, but this is a much more crisp, intention-revealing way of characterizing it. So that's much of what we talked about last time, and I tried to give some understanding as to what was going on there just a little bit categorically. Um, but basically, we have these AC sets here, and we can specify them with an utmost elegance with AC set colam. And then we're going to have these, uh, then we're going to have these rewrite rules built out of this. And uh, we, uh, we've been seeing that in this very code shown here. So we have um, maybe, let's see, what would be a good one to, to show? Well, um, Sure, uh, I could say uh, moving forward, uh, we have these three components of the rule. We have the L part of it. Um, uh, so here we have a sheep along an edge where the sheep location is at the source of the edge. So the sheep is positioned um, at the start of this edge, and the direction of the edge is the same as the sheep direction. So the sheep is facing the right direction for this edge to map apply to them, or 
conversely, this is the edge that's that starts to where the sheep is and that's in the same direction as the sheep, right? That's what we got here. That's what this sets up for us, an AC set. Um, the That's the L. The I will be matching the thing that's invariant, which is the edge. The edge ain't going to change. It's the sheep which moves, not the edge. Um, uh, and R is the rewritten rule. So here we have an edge and sheep. And now the sheep is at the target of the edge because they followed the edge. They went along the edge. And the edge is still in the direction the sheep has been going, right? That's that's the edge we're talking about. They went along the edge so it was in the direction of them, right? Um, so this is our LIR mm -hmm. um, rewrite rule. These are all C sets specified with this declarative fashion in this declarative fashion. And then we need to um, specify uh, the rule. And um, the rule here is that um, we are going to um, have, so the rule com consists of Basically, these homs, this is the first hom. So it's from I to L. That's this monomorphism because these things are invariant. They stay within this. Um, and then from I to R, which is monic for some reason, it's not shown as monic here, but I is within R, right? Yeah. And then there's some extra bit of logic. I didn't, didn't, give this example last time um you know maybe i i could have uh, done some of these other examples where there's no negative application condition that wolves are going to eat the sheep and here the r has only a wolf in it so and there's no application condition but this time i wanted to talk about application conditions a little bit so let's let's go back and face the music okay so application conditions come in two types, positive and negative. Positive say it occurs under this condition. Negative says don't it, it does not occur under this condition. In this case, we have a negative application condition. So that positive and negative is indicated by this Boolean. So this is application condition. Under what conditions does this rule fire? Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it's if it's not specified, it'll fire under all conditions that it matches. But here we we can choose. And and um what is this application condition? It's not something that's shown in this diagram, right? But it's governing on what case we're gonna rewrite this to this. Because this is the original context under which we're applying this, and then we're gonna rewrite it to this. It's a double push-up. Basically, this reflects applying this rule, nice declarative rule, to this original C set state. Okay, what's this application condition? Well, it's, okay, what, what does it mean? Okay, it's an application condition. Okay, that's a good start. Um, and it's a negative application condition, so we're only gonna fire when it's not true. And it's gonna involve a map from L to SN, which is uh, again a C set. It's gonna, gonna specify for us when it shouldn't occur, right? When it shouldn't occur. Okay, what's what's going on here? Okay. So this is gonna encode a condition. Hmm. Well, if the sheep is together with an edge, look familiar. Um the sheep's lock is the source lock. Okay, yeah. Sheep's direction is the, is the direction of that edge. Yeah, okay, fine. But the sheep's energy is zero. The sheep is exhausted. It is too depleted to move. In that case, we will not fire said rule. This rule will not fire to move them along this edge with which 
whose direction they're aligned. They have a direction, they have an edge from their position to another one along that direction. Everything is set up for them to move except their energy is zero. So in that case, this rule is countermanded, right? It's overruled. We don't go. Mm. Um, and now, if the rule does fire, some things happen. Um, and I'm still learning to, to read this, but roughly, I think what it says is their energy goes down by one. Their energy is decreased by by one. And I think this what this says is basically their direction stays the same. Um I don't I don't I, I don't have a principled way to sort of parse this yet. Um but this is specifying how to update the attributes. And I think it's based on their existing attributes and i think this is their energy and i think this is their existing direction um and this is a function in julia it says you know give it that give me now the direction etc okay um now once we once we have this rule yeah, it's it's got this it's got this negative application condition we're going to wrap it up into this rule app it's a try rule. Um, and I'm 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 not yet sure if this is try as in the sense of composition product, a substitution product in polynomial functors. I think that actually may be consistent, but it also may be that it can uh succeed or fail. And I I'm, I'm not sure in what sense or if it's a pun and it's in both senses. Um uh, but um, uh, here we're we're wrapping it up in this try rule, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm myself I'm kind of unclear about exactly why these two things are there. But if we go see why this um, this forward sheep forward thing is used, it's used down here. And we give it a kind of nice little, little alias up here, and we apply it here. Um, so we're applying it to um, uh, to uh, three uh, three things here. So the sheep forward uh, to um, uh, I, I think this is going out uh, left going out straight and going out right um i i think and i think those reflect the fact that you might not have turned that's the straight you turn left that's this input and out right came from this way so i i think that's basically this vector is coming from from the fact that we have all these kind of incident pieces here. Um, and this LFT is is from this left rotate, um, turn left. Um, and this is from the turn right. Um, and and out straight is from this, uh, this uh, turn uh, here, um, right. Um, and turn in turn is a is a um i think this uh has a probabilistic um thing where with probability two out of four you go straight one out of four you go left and one out of four you go right well we'll we'll come to that let's go look at another application condition if we could um so, um, by the way, nice ability to test these things modularly. Wrapping them up in these nice little pieces um, modularly, we can we can do some nice little unit testing with them, which is cool. Um, okay, sheep eat grass here. Um, um, 
So uh, here we have a um, a simple rule where the sheep consume grass. Um, and in order for that to fire, we in order for it to be to be firing, we have to have a sheep in a place where there's grass to eat. Um, now, the interesting thing here, which I, I don't fully grok, um, is that uh, this rule, so you'll notice this rule up here, we, we specified these hums, right? We had to specify the L, that's this, this line, and then we had to specify the R, that's this line. And then we have this application condition. Here, we just give it, um, excuse me, we just give it uh, S. And I think that means that we just have S, S, S. And we're treating this rule as like the application condition. Like under what conditions does this fire under these conditions? Um, uh, that this applies. So, so here we have a positive application condition, PAC. Um, this is the application condition. Why it doesn't just rewrite it? Um, I'm. I I think it's because I'm just thinking this through. I think it's because the only update is to attributes. I, I remember reading something about that here it, it had to actually do with this one the, the very top one it says this is a right, right rule that only uh modifies an attribute rather than changing any combinatorial data so rather than this we simply put in um uh in an expression dictionary that says how we update our our dictionary um here there's only one i think x there's only one thing to be uh to be updated. Um, I don't fully grok that. Maybe it's the wires coming in. Um, but but here we only are updating our our attributes. So we don't do a rewrite. We don't do LIR because there's no data to be updated here. It's just these attributes get updated. And these attributes, how do they get updated? The sheep becomes fattened. So the sheep the sheep is engorged um, and develops a larger energy, gets larger energy. And the grass the grass goes back to having a countdown from 30. It's eaten to the ground um, in the event that this is fired. I think that's the the basic um, uh, deal here. Um, now, um, we had seen this last time, um, and in fact, I referred to it here, where, right, we have wolves and sheep together. Here we match them, but this R is just identity on W, because we have W here and W here. L is the sheep and the wolf, and it, conceptually, it's a pullback of sheep, a pair of sheep and wolf, where where the sheep and the wolf are at the same location. And pullback in a CSAT is, can be framed because of the contravariance involved with a colim push out in the, the exponent. And, and so we have this one being ID, WW, L being this thing. And when we match it, so this is the morphism L, lowercase L, right? And then when we match it, um, the uh, the uh, wolf becomes bigger and mumble. I, I mumble. I don't. I don't know something. Uh, the but the sheep disappears, right? This is rewritten. This C set is rewritten. Oh, it's, it's, it's only a W here. So this context, when you have this situation and it's matched here, it'll be rewritten to a situation where it is uh, 
the wolf disappears. Oh, sorry, the sheep disappears. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, right. Okay. Now, um, a few more things that I'm I'm kind of figuring out right now. Um, so, um. Um, what's the best way to show these? Um, oh, yes, right. Okay, so one thing is this const con thing, okay? Um, uh, I think the const con is, okay, so you'll notice turn and maybe or where we have um, const con, right? Um, so, uh this uh turn which is is uh, i think the initial thing and it's three uh three outputs um one for this probability of happening one for this one one for this one um and then we're gonna have maybe here uh and maybe is uh here for moved and it's gonna have two possible outcomes whether or not they reproduce or not let's see where that that um occurs so this is used in making the schedule for sheep for sheep we'll see the wolves are just data migration of this okay so here's our turn and turn is three outcomes right here we go this one this one and this one okay um and i think all of them are associated with a s uh out so we have these three and um uh and then this reproduce one has two possible outcomes again probabilistic so this is probabilistic you know two out of four they go this way one out of four they go this way one out of four they go this way reproduce one out of two this way one out of i'm sorry 90 percent 90 percent not 90 percent not reproduce uh 10 percent reproduce 90 percent go here 10% go here. Um, uh, and you'll notice that this is weaving together, like the outcomes for this get then composed in this, right? Like um, this turn one out L gets taken in as the, um, as the sheep rotate input here. So these are composed together. And I think this is a composition of morphisms. These are, um, so these building blocks are generators and you, you, you stack them together, you compose them. And they write, rewrite AC sets to AC sets. And they're morphisms between AC sets. And um, one of the outcomes of this, as Chris Brown notes, is that we can use this data migration functor on this. Remember, functors apply map objects to objects, like get up a functor maps AC sets to AC sets, and morphisms between AC sets to morphisms between AC sets. So here we have a morphism between AC sets in LV, and the non-coordinate sort of core logic kind of basic logic of this. And we're going to map it with the data migration functor to be a morphism between LV primes, which have this coordinate. Mm -hmm. And for that, we use this data migration functor. And, um, so we'll, whoops, uh, we'll go down to the F2 here. And, um, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. okay. Um, uh, mumble, mumble. Um, Okay. Oh, we're using F. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I've got to introduce that that other one. Um, so let's go to the data migrations um, here. Okay, yeah, this one swaps sheep to wolves and wolves to sheep. And the idea here is, um, right, right, right. Yeah, so it is true we use F2 to kind of lift everything to operate on coordinates. And because we have morphisms between things and we have 
we have these AC sets and we have morphisms between them, we can kind of promote the whole thing to a context from going from LV to LB prime to where, you know, it needs patterns to be matched in the underlying LV prime AC set. And it will just transport them over. We talked about that a few minutes ago. But here, L F migrates things that are defined in terms of sheep to things that are defined in terms of wolves, amongst other things. And so here, we just define things on sheep. Mm -hmm. These things which operate in terms of sheep, that sheep forward, sheep rotate left, sheep rotate right, right? They're all based on these these AC set co limbs, which you know have reproduction for sheep, right? Um, uh, for sheep, uh, or um, here moving forward, uh, they are defined on sheep, right? Sheep. Um, and the beautiful thing is that we can take that out and apply it. Apply it um, here to this. So, so we. By the way, we just kind of cons this up. We 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 sort of put this together. We we you know compose these things together. We get a composition of these things, right? Um, and uh, and then we and then we compose them. Uh, with sheep eat, so we have that at the beginning. So you could, I hope you get the sense that these are morphisms. You could just be composed together. It's just gorgeous. It's just awesome. It's just great. So we compose these together. These are all sheep things, but then we just go and we turn them into wolf things through data migration functor. We take these things that know all about sheep tables and how to do things in terms of sheep tables. That's what the AC set is, right? And those AC set co-limits are just AC sets, et cetera. And we apply this data migration functor and, you know, lo and behold, it converts it to a wolf, a wolf equivalent. Uh, but notice the cleverness that went on here. Um, uh, so I think the reason they didn't weave in sheep eat here is because sheep uh, eat differently than wolves, as you might infer. Um, so, so here, this is defined without sheep eat. It could have been put on here, but then I think we couldn't have migrated it to wolves. Instead, what we do is we have this more sort of modular way of handling it so we define sheep eat right this is sheep uh uh mumble i'm sorry this is general um and then because it doesn't have sheep eat um we, you know we, we and there's no sheep eat so then we append or we compose sheep eat with it to get this for um uh, for for the whole rule for sheep, but because we define this separately, now we could take it. We could take this and migrate it over to wolves, and we don't have to worry that it includes sheep eat, which is different for wolves. We we can't just swap wolf and sheep condition for sheep eating. We can't just do that to get wolf eating. Instead, we we bring that over for the non eating parts, and then we append it with wolf eat. And wolf eat is a more transgressive affair than sheep eating. Um, and so here's the wolf eat one. So so all this just comes out. It's just beautiful. It just it just um, uh, comes out. Okay. Now um, the the next thing which is going to be occurring, which we're not going to cover this time, but I want to I want to give you a a picture of this is we're going to be weaving them together in a um in a set of in, in you know an entirety right um so uh we're going to have a while schedule where we 
go through and uh, we are going to be dealing with the sheep parts, which are going to be with respect to sheep things, um, the wolf parts with respect to wolf things, um, and the grass parts with respect to grass things. Um, so this G ink is, I think, basically grass incrementing. You know, we have we have grass grass here, grass here, ID between them, and grass here, ID between them. Uh, we basically say um, uh, it it automatically fires unless the grass is ready to eat, in which case it doesn't fire, and if it if it does fire, if the grass ain't ready to eat, we count down. So maybe it was at 30 and now it's 29, or maybe it was at 15 and now it's 14. Um, that's what this uh, G ink does. And uh, and that's what I think is going on here. Um, so, and we're gonna have this, this agent thing is I think going to involve the, um, the, 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 the querying. And this querying, as I as I understand it, is going to uh, go through, and it and it looks kind of like like this. Um, it's going to go through, and uh, it you notice it as two things coming in, um, and it's going to go through and loop around to handle all of this um, uh, of these wolves. The second, notice the second output from this goes to wolf. That will be B. And the basic picture of this is, um, is given by this. It kind of loops around, loops around, loops around. If anyone wants to go look at this, uh, it's quite instructive. Um, and uh, so it loops around for all the wolves. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, for each B. Um, uh, this I think will be uh, the first time this this goes here, and once that's done, I I think it it increments uh, the, uh, the does the grass or what have you. But here we're sort of getting all wolves, and we're executing these. Now this is based on polynomial functors, and I'm not going to go into it now. But it goes through, and it loops through this, and then I think it's going to go through the this for grass and and I think it maybe it first does sheep. That's why it says, I think, um, do sheep, then all wolves, and then daily operations. So bum, 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 bum. that's the B here. And then we're going to do, we're going to fall through, and we're going to do all wolves. Uh, bum, 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 bum. That's the B from this one, second one here. So there's first this second one, does it. Then we fall through. Then we do this second one, wolves. And then we fall through, and then we do the grass, and then then I think we're somehow mumble. Um, then we're done, I guess, or something. Um, anyway, uh, this this goes through here, and notice that all of this is then promoted to have coordinates, uh, so that all of these things have the ability when they're given an underlying LV prime AC set to sort of match coordinates and just bring them over, bring them over, bring them over, and uh, by extension to display things. Um, uh, we can we could kind of view it with the coordinates that we've brought over. Um, so that's the basic ideas here. And this, you know, this is these sort of things with state and while, I think, Particularly this, I think, is using polynomial functors. This fail thing is using kind of a monad on top of polynomial functors, which is a polynomial monad. So it, it's part of polynomial functors framework. And uh, it weaves these uh, together. And the use of the data migration functor, again, allows us to, to do this promotion, which is, is kind of cool. So that's the, that's the picture here. Uh, I need to go to talk about advancing the framework for ABM modeling for ACT, but I hope this is 
you know, builds up some understanding here. Uh, I will just note that there are some other examples also included for this framework. If anyone wants to look, um, there's this game of life example, and I'm just starting to kind of look at this uh, myself. And but we'll we'll probably soon talk about that example to make sure we understand uh, how that works. But I think we're getting further and further in penetrating this, and hopefully in learning how we might be able to explain it to others. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks greatly to